Welcome to IIMSC. This is a course on Maths 1 for undergraduate students. This is Dr. Bhavani. I have a, I am a PhD from Osman University and uh, at an experience of 12 years teaching in a reputed engineering college. I have been handling various papers for undergraduate students in mathematics. This course, Maths 1, is meant for undergraduate students of all engineering colleges and we aim at seeing to it that all students perform well in mathematics not only just pass but also get good marks and the recent survey sh shows that students are struggling with maths 1 so we have uh, developed the content in such a way that every student first is his or her first aim is to pass then to get better marks than they were getting earlier the course along with the concept work point of view handles uh, the examination point of view wherein we do we do all the previous question paper questions frequently asked questions also telling the students how important a unit is from the examination point of view. This course has five units, each or each one of them being the given same equal importance in the exam. Today we will look at the topic of differential equations. I'll give you a brief introduction about the topic, overview the topic and uh, the application point of view because these are engineering students applications are more important so the application point of view and how it's uh, important from the examination point of view also so differential equations uh, first let us see what you mean by differential equations we all know what an equation. An equation is nothing but something, some expression of the type ax plus by plus c equal to 0. Anything of this type where something is equated to 0 is what is called an equation. Now what is differential equation? We all know about what is called derivatives. We heard about what is called derivatives. We know that if there is a function y of x y is a function of x then y will change with respect to x x is called the independent variable y is called the dependent variable and x changes x changes with respect y changes with respect to x the change in y with respect to x is what is called the derivative dy by dx so dy by dx is nothing but a small change in y with respect to x this can be anything in our real day life, this can be uh, population growth with respect to time, anything. It can be uh, when you come to uh, heating and cooling of a body, the heat uh, temperature of a body with respect to time, it can be anything. So y and x are variables presently, but they can uh, mean anything in the respective context. Now we have also, also seen in your intermediate classes that not only dy by dx, you can also find what is called d square y by dx square. This is the second derivative. That means you are differentiating this expression again, d of d by dx of this. Differentiating this expression again, you will get what is called this d square y by dx square. You can go on and on. You can get d cube y by dx cube, so on and so forth as many number of times as the function can be differentiated. Now when you have an equation of that type involving all these expressions, this is what is called a differential equation. For example, suppose you have an equation of this type dy by dx plus xy is x. This equation involves the variables x and y also a derivative, hence it is called a differential equation. Differential equation doesn't mean that it should have a first order derivative. These are what are called orders. This is called first derivative or first order derivative. This is a second order derivative. This is the third order derivative. Right? When you go back to the equation, you can have equations of many types. 
d square y by dx square plus 2 dy by dx plus y is 0. This is an equation where there is a first order derivative, there is a second order derivative. Depending on this, the equations are given names. This is called a first order differential equation. This is called a second order differential equation. Depending on the highest order derivative present in the equation, we give it a name called second order. Similarly, you can have a third order differential equation also. This is a third order differential equation. And please remember one thing. When there is a third order differential equation, it doesn't really mean that you should have a second order and a third, first order derivative also involved. See, for this example, you don't have a first order derivative, you don't have a second order derivative, doesn't really matter at all. Right? These are differential equations. These are separated because of the methods of solving. Why do we form a differential equation? Unless you know how to solve it, unless you know how to apply it, there is no point. So in order to apply or use the differential equation, we need to solve it. What does solving mean? Solving mean, means finding the value of y in terms of x. If you want to solve, each one of these equations has a different method of solving. So we put them in different categories. These are first order equations. First order equations are put in one category where you say all first order equations then second one, all higher order equations. All the higher order equations have a same method of solving. So first thing we would look at first order equations. Then we will talk about solving higher order equations. Now, if we look at first order equations, let us see how to solve them. What are they and how to solve them? First order differential equations. These are called first order differential equations or first order ordinary differential equations because we are looking at ordinary derivatives there. Right? Suppose the equations are very simple. They are what are called variable separable equations. We will look at each one of them later. First, we will look at the overview. Next is what is called homogeneous equations. The third one, exact differential equations. DE is differential equations. Uh, next is linear differential equations. This one, Bernoulli's differential equations. Now you can ask me, ma'am, why are you looking at so many types of uh, differential equations? You said first order, fine. You could have a single uh, method of solving all of them. No, because depending on their complexity, you have different methods of solving. So we are first segregating them into different types. Each one of them has a different type of solving. Now when you look at the first one, variable separable equations, it means that the variables are separable. What are the variables involved in the equation? Suppose you have an equation in x and y. Suppose you have an equation of this type, dy by dx is under root 1 minus y square by 1 minus x square. Here these are the variables, x and y. This is the derivative. If the variables are separable directly, it is what is called variable separable equation. Look at this equation. I can put all our y terms together, all x terms together. How I do this? I send it cross like this. So under root 1 minus y square equal to dx by under root 1 minus x square. Right? So once I have terms of this type together, I can directly integrate. Now, why are we doing this integration? Actually, what is happening here? When you look at a differential equation, there is a derivative involved. When you want to solve it, what do you mean by solving? Getting y in terms of x. Somehow you should try to eliminate this dy by dx. That is, remove that uh, operator. What is the inverse operator of differentiation? Integration. So if you are able to integrate, that means you have solved the equation. We have methods and means of integrations. See, dy by under root 1 minus y square. Suppose we have formulae for this. In fact, y equal to sin x if you substitute and simplify, this will be sin inverse. 
sin inverse y. The integral of the second one would be sin inverse x plus c. So this is what is the relation between x and y. That is what is giving you the solution. This is what is called the solution. We will look, look at uh, different types of solutions later. For, for now, I am giving you an overview of a solution first. Right? This is about the first type of solution, the variable separable equation. Similarly, you have a homogeneous equation, exact equation, linear equation. You, we will tell you how to identify them and how to solve them. Next thing, you can ask me, ma'am, why are we doing all these? Why are we learning all these? We are being engineering students. Why do we need them? Yes. Unless there is an application, there is no use of learning all these. There are applications. To start with, let me tell you the applications of these equations, the variable separable equations, which we have looked at. Now, what are variable separable equations? dy by some function of y. You can have y or on top dx by g of x. It could be like this or it could be f of y dy that's equal to g of x dx. Anything of this type is what is a variable separable equation integrable directly. So what are the applications? First application is Newton's law of cooling. Right? Now, what is Newton's law of cooling? Let me tell you how we apply it. Just uh, very uh, ambiguously saying that uh, applying is easy, not easy, not enough. So let us say why and uh, how we are applying it here. What does Newton's law of cooling say? Newton's law of cooling says what is the rate of change of a body? How is the rate of change of a body changing? With respect to its surroundings and time. Suppose a hot body is kept in a room. The temperature of the room is lesser than, obviously lesser than the body. Now, after some time you see that the temperature of the body is cooling. How fast it's cooling, the rate at which it's cooling is given by Newton's law of cooling. Suppose T is the temperature of the body, T is the, T A is the temperature of the surroundings. Newton's law says that dT by d small t, small t is the time, is proportional to because the temperature is decreasing we are putting a minus sign and constant times t minus t a actually newton's law says dt by dt is proportional to the difference in the temperatures between the body and its surroundings so we have removed the temperature proportionality constant we have put a minus sign because the rate is reducing and a proportionality constant k. This is the differential equation showing the, identifying the Newton law of cooling. If you want to solve it, look at this equation more carefully. If t, capital T is the dependent variable, small t is the independent variable, this equation is variable separable. How? See here. I didn't do anything. I just brought this here. And this has gone here. So this is entirely a function of capital T. This is entirely a function of small t. Of course, though no term of small t is here. Integrate, you will get the solution. So this is an application of your variable separable equation. So if you want to solve the Newton's law of cooling or then you find a solution for the Newton's method of cooling, this is one method. The variable separable equation is applied. Similarly, second application which we have is uh, population growth. Mind you, I am giving you an overview of all these. We will be solving, actually solving the equations in the next session. Population growth or radioactive decay. Both are same. Right? Now, experiments have shown that population growth is dependent on the amount of population at a particular time. Suppose if x is the population, t is the time, the rate of change of x with respect to t, that means how population is growing with respect to time, is proportional to the amount of population which is there now. Now, this can be written in terms of an equation as 
dx by dt equal to just remove the proportionality uh, proportionality sign put a constant a times x is it not variable separable yes dx by x equal to k dt integrate solve it we will get in how do you integrate this integral of 1 by x is log x this is k nothing is here so integral of 1 is t plus some constant of integration c if further some condition is given to you you can use that condition to evaluate the constants k and c similarly the same method is used for radioactive decay also suppose there is an uh, radioactive element say uranium or something uh, disintegrating with respect to time as time passes it will reduce so because the rate is reduction we put a negative sign dx by dt proportional to x dx by dt is minus kx of course we will not be doing all this in our uh, course this is the background for the course actually the equation is given to you you will just use it i am trying to tell you the background of whatever we are going to learn That's same solution again only the thing is you have a negative sign here so these are some of the applications of the differential equations what we are going to learn incidentally both these and along with your newton's law of cooling are applications of variable separable equation not all applications are for variable separable some equations we uh, see in life in our day to day situations are exact equations some of them are homogeneous some of them are uh, linear so we need to know all of them so that we can solve these day to day examples another important example of our uh, differential first order differential equation is orthogonal trajectories these are all the applications which are given in our undergraduate syllabus all these three there are many more but these are pertaining to our course orthogonal trajectories this is one important application where you will always get a question in the exam and students always get confused as to which equation should be used here this could be exact this could be variable separable this could be linear anything in further the courses classes we will see how to identify the equation and then how to solve it so today we have seen the an overview of what is a differential equation what are the different types of first order differential equations we have and what possible applications could be could there be in our course though we did not solve them individually we are just seen a overview of all of them